Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can download multiple files in one go by placing them in a zip file and then downloading that. So in order to show you this, I'm going to be downloading the images that appear on screen in both high and low resolution, but I'm not going to be downloading all of the images every time. I'm only going to be downloading those that a user selects via the checkboxes below the images. So the underlying markup is three image elements with SRC values already set to low resolution versions of the images. And directly below each image is an input element of type checkbox. And below the main content images and checkboxes, there is a button that will program to start the download of the zip file when it is clicked. So in JavaScript, I've already selected the button and added an event listener to it listening out for a click event. And when that occurs, the function that I passed in in the second argument position, it will run. And I've already listed here the steps that I'm going to be following to download the images in zip format. So the first of those is to store URLs to the images in an array. So to do that, I'm going to select all of the image elements in the DOM using query selector all. So this is going to return to me all of the elements in an iterable list. And what I want to do is to iterate through that list, extracting the SRC value from each image. So for that, I can use for each. So with for each, you pass a function into it that will run as many times as there are items on the iterable. And each time the function runs, you have available to you the current item. So to get the SRC value of each item in an array, I'll create a new empty array before calling for each. And then inside the for each function, push the SRC value of the current item into the URLs array. Now at the moment, all SRC values are being pushed into the array, but I want the pushing of each value to be conditional upon whether a user has selected an image via its checkbox. So to do that, I'm going to introduce an if statement here, nesting the pushing inside of it. And the condition here is going to be whether the checkbox next to an image is checked. So we can traverse the DOM to access the checkbox for an image using next element sibling. And to check if it's currently ticked, you can query the check property, which will return true or false. So if it returns true, then the SRC for an image will be pushed into the array. So let's see whether this is working. So we're getting the expected SRC values in the array. However, you might want these URLs to point to high resolution versions of the images. So instead of pushing SRC values into the array, Instead, I'm going to be pushing paths to high resolution images. So relative to index.html, they are in the folder images forward slash high res, and they have the same file names as the low res images that the SRC values are pointing to. So what I'm going to do here is extract the file name from the end of the SRC and then append it to the path to the high res images. So to get the file name, from the SRC, I can use the slice method, passing in the last index position of a forward slash in the SRC. So this will give me the file name, including the forward slash. So to avoid that, I can increase the index value that I'm slicing at by one. And then I can push that value preceded by the path to the high res images into the URLs array. So I'm using string literal syntax to construct the string. So let's test this. So now relative paths to the high res images are being pushed into the array. And it's actually a good thing that they're relative URLs because it means that your script is not anchored to only work on one particular domain name. You may have noticed that the SRC values were full URLs, but these were generated also on the basis of relative URLs, which were the SRC values for the images in the HTML. Okay, so now that we have the URLs in an array, we're ready to move on to the next step, which is getting the image data. 
So to be doing this, I'm going to be using the native fetch function, and I'm going to be making multiple fetches for the image data to the URLs that are in the array. So each fetch request is going to return a promise, and I want to wait until each of those has resolved until I zip the image data. So to wait for multiple promises, you can use the all method on the native promise object. So this accepts an array of promises which you're waiting for, and it also returns a promise which resolves when all the promises that you pass into it resolve. So to wait for the result of promise.all, I'm going to use the await keyword. And to enable that, I need to use the async keyword before the function in which it is nested. So I'll store a reference to its result when it comes through. And before that, create the array of promises to pass into promise.all. So I want to fetch the data from each of the URLs, returning an array of promises that will eventually resolve that I can pass into promise.all. So I'm going to call map on URLs. And the function that I pass in here will run as many times as there are URLs. Each time I have each item available to me, and the return value of map is an array of each return value each time the function runs. So what I'm going to do is do the fetch inside here and make the result the return value of the function. So I'm going to use the async keyword before this function. This means that the function immediately returns a promise that will immediately resolve when I provide a return value inside the function. So first, I want to fetch the data from each of the URLs. So fetch returns a promise, and I can use a wait to wait for the result because we are inside an asynchronous function. So fetch returns a response object with a readable stream on it that will contain the file data. And what we want to do is to read that into a file container. So we can do that by calling blob on the response object. So this is going to read the file data into a blob object, which in JavaScript is a container of raw binary data. And we can use the data in that format to create a zip file. So I'm going to make the return value of the function a blob each time. And this is going to be the value that each promise resolves to in the array that map returns. So we can now pass that in to promise.all. Promise.all is going to wait for all of the promises to resolve, and it's going to return the results into an array. So the end result is going to be an array of file data in blob format. So let's test if this is working. So we're getting an array of blobs logged to the console, each one of type image JPEG, and we also get the size of each in bytes. So we now have the image data in an array, and we can move on to the next step, which is creating a zip file of that image data. So to create the zip file, I'm going to rely upon a well-established library for doing that, JSZip. So you can install this via NPM, or you can download the JSZip script and link to it locally. In this tutorial, though, I'm going to be importing it into my project via a CDN link. So I'll place the link in the head section of my HTML. And then down in my script, I will have available to me a new object. And that object is JSZip. So this is an object constructor. So if I call it with the new keyword before it, this is going to create a new object that I'll save under the reference of zip. And it's this object that I can use to create a new zip file. So to add a file, you call the file method, passing in as a first argument, a file name, and secondly, the file data. Now, in this case, we want to add all of the blobs from the array that was generated in the last step. So I'm going to call for each on the blobs array. And what I have available to me each time inside the for each function is each blob. And what I want to do each time the function runs is add the current blob to zip. So the second argument here inside this function should be blob. 
for the file name. I know it's going to be a JPEG every time, but I want to create a unique file name here. So what I'm going to do is make use of a second parameter that you have available to you in foreach.jpg. Now, if you want to generate some folder structure, what you can do is call the folder method, entering the name of the folder that you want to create, store a reference to the folder that you have created, and then you can call the file method on that reference to add a file into that folder. So you could place files in here, but in this example, I'm just going to create a simple text document. Now, the zip object that we've been working with isn't actually a zip file yet, so we still need to generate that. And we can do that by calling the generate async method on the zip object you've created. And you need to enter here the output data format. So a blob can be downloaded as a file on the front end. And as the name suggests, generate async is an asynchronous process. It returns a promise, which we can wait for the result of using the await keyword. And the end result is going to be the zip file ready to download. So let's take a look at it in the console. So we've created a blog file that can be downloaded of type application zip. So the final step is to download this blob. So I'm going to pass the blob into a function that I will define outside of this one. So this keeps the previous function a bit less congested and it's reusable functionality. So I could use for something else. So to initiate a user download, you can create a new anchor element, setting the download attribute to the file name that you want to save it under. So in this case, I'll save it as test.zip. A href attribute should point to the file. So this should be a URL. We don't have one for the file, but you can create a temporary URL to a blob in browser memory using create object URL, passing the blob into it. So I'll store a reference to URL it creates and set that as the href of the anchor element. Now, what we're going to be doing is simulating a click on that element. So to do that, you can call the click method. Now in most browsers, this will work, but in some browsers, you have to add the element to the DOM first. So to be on the safe side, I'll append the anchor element to the DOM before simulating the click. And directly afterwards, I can remove it from the DOM again and make sure that the element is not visible to the user. You can set a display style of none. And it would be good practice here to remove the temporary URL from memory once the download starts, because while it exists, the file that it's pointing to is also being held in memory. So after the download starts for a particular zip file, it's no longer necessary and you can remove the URL and associated file from memory like this using revoke object URL. So let's test this now. When I click the download button, that should start a download of the images I select in zip format. So you can see down here that that is what is happening. So if we inspect the zip file here, we have two JPEG images that correspond to the ones that we selected on the page. And we also have this subfolder with the readme file inside it. Now, if you're working with images like I am here and you want to download the images that appear on the page, then I have a little trick for you that will prevent you having to make fetch requests for the image data. So to do that, you can draw each of the images onto a HTML canvas and then extract each of them in blog format. The downside is that it introduces an image processing step in the client. So if it's very important to you to have the original image data downloaded in a zip, then you probably want to make a fetch request or the original data, but if you're okay with processed versions of the images and you want to avoid making a fetch request, 
this is something that you might want to employ. So instead of creating a URLs array here, I'm going to create an array of blobs of the image data. So what I'm going to do inside this for each function is draw each image that user has selected onto a canvas. So now that I've created a new canvas element here, I need to get a context for the canvas because you don't draw directly onto the canvas. You draw onto the context. Next, you want to set the width and the height of the canvas to the natural width and height of the image. So to the dimensions of the original image, not how it appears on the page. Now we're ready to draw the image onto the context on the canvas. So the first argument is the image element. The second and third are where you want to start drawing on the X and Y axis specified in pixels. So if you want to cover the whole canvas, you want to start drawing at the beginning of both axes. Now to extract the data from the canvas as a blob, you call to blob on the canvas and you enter a callback function here where the blob is available to you. Now this process of generating a blob, it takes a little bit of time and is asynchronous. So you want to wait for all of the blobs to be available before you place them in a zip file. So instead of pushing blobs directly into the blobs array, what I'm going to push into there is promises that resolve to blob values. So to do that, I'm going to push each time into the blobs array a new promise. So immediately what goes in the array is a promise that will eventually resolve and then inside the promise, I create the blob. And when I have the blob available, I call res. That ends the promise. And the value that it should resolve to is the blob. So the values in the blobs array will initially be promises. So what we want to do here is to wait for them all to resolve. So we can do that using promise.all, like we did for the fetches. So promise.all returns a promise and I'll store a reference to that. I no longer need any of this fetch code, so I'm going to comment that out. Also, there is no URLs array. Now, one change that I'm going to make to the code here before I test it is to change the file extension when I'm adding each blob to the zip file, because when you extract a blob from the canvas, by default, it will be in PNG format. You can try to generate a blob in a different format by adding a second argument when calling the to blob function, where you specify a MIME type for the image format that you'd like to produce. But browser support is not guaranteed for any format other than PNG. If you try to produce a format that the browser doesn't support, then it will default back to PNG. So the safest option is to stick with the PNG format. And just before we test again, I noticed that the image file names are starting at zero. So I can add plus one here. So they'll start from one. So let's test this now. And start the download. So this triggers the download of a zip file. This time the images are in PNG format. So they're a little smaller than in the last example because these are low resolution versions of the images. But as you can see, they resemble quite well the images that appear on screen, even though they've gone through the processing step of being drawn to the canvas and then extracted from it. So if you're happy with this quality, then you can use this trick to avoid a fetch request for images that have already loaded onto the page. So that's it for this tutorial on starting user download of multiple files using the example of images. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.